Morning all. Okay, let's try another 15 minute game. Um, I want to also try and put uh, another 100 videos in a box set, uh, a new box set for the 5 minute ones. But this uh, 15 minute interesting innovation, uh, so I'm going to try and experiment with this idea of um, uh, you know the, the strength of my moves or the weaknesses of the opponent's moves to try and um, be more consciously aware of that when calculating variations. So calling that um, uh, strength weakness pruning, you know, a, uh, taking the making out of alpha beta pruning. If I can just, uh, when calculating, focus on 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 um, on examining uh, you know the weak points of each move, which might be considered or might be in the main game path. Or just be in variations considered. So, um, trying to get a game here on the 15 minute it takes it takes a while actually. It takes a while. Um, hopefully, we're going to get a game soon. Uh, what's going on on the main console thing? Okay. Um, it does say we paired and starting uh, be ready. Uh, in the pool of players waiting to be paired. I moan again, click that button again. Already in the pool uh, players waiting to be paired. So what is the 15 minute um, ranking like? What, what is my rank anyway? It's at rank 168. The, the, the pool isn't that huge then if I'm already ranked 168 on it. Okay. Leisure du fool. Okay, France. Okay, um, I could play French defense given that he's French. <laughs> it's, it's something Bronstein used to do. He used because he used to play any opening anyway, uh, like me. He used to just uh, be quite funny with his choices uh, based on the opponent or where he was playing. Um, <clears throat> okay, solid system from my opponent, but maybe a bit passive. So a usual like. Uh, C5, knight C6, two for the price of one. It could have come out of the Sicilian defence. As soon as I play C5, we've got uh, a position, French or Sicilian, you could argue. Um, okay. Uh, so do I go mad with H6 and G5, or be a bit more patient here? I think Queen C7, B6 for Bishop B7. I'll prepare the surprise H6 and G5 later, pouncing like a cat when he castles kingside. Now he's confused. He's wondering, mm, I'm going to, I'm going to castle queenside with this move, Queen C7. I'm not routinely castling kingside. Yeah, this is always something you know about routinely castling. I don't really take that for granted when I'm going to castle, especially when playing black in the French defence. Especially when white has this pawn wedge, advanced pawn wedge, it's often a bad idea to castle kingside. I find. Uh, I think f5. It seems to be restrained, but I don't like the look of it. Anyway, so I'm going to play g6. Imagine takes a knight g5 beyond f7. I don't mind you, knight e5. The bishop here is weakening e6. So in the, in that respect, I think g6 because bishop b7 f5 might actually be dangerous. A bit of prophylaxis. It's a wasted move as well. You could call prophylaxis moves wasted moves as well. It could have been useful. If I can follow up with h6 and bishop b7, it's pretty closed in the center. So time shouldn't be so critical in this kind of closed position. I think that confuses a lot of Morphe enthusiasts uh, watching these closed positions, these French defence games. Uh, with time not being so critical, it causes some sort of um, feeling of, you know, should should like um, one be punished? But um, how exactly? And and White's pieces are kind of quite passive here, it seems, um, as well as the centre being fixed. So h6 as well, another prophylaxis against, uh, and also potentially attacking with g5 later. Okay. So I just want to castle queenside, and maybe consider either g5 or even f5 first, because f5 first fixes f4. If takes 
takes he's left with a pawn blocking in the bishop here um so i don't know f5 might actually be good um as well <clears throat> okay so if i play king b8 whoops king b8 so b4 maybe c4 just closing things down on the queen side and if b5 knight a5 okay in fact c4 here looks to be good because i want to get c4 potentially anyway for a knight and taking would be bad because of this bishop extended on the diagonal i love that routine actually when that happens um so here i mean knight a5 b4 knight b3 i don't know about that one um because um the knight might be a liability to knight d2 later uh, so I think I'd rather try and clamp down on c4 actually celebrate this bishop on the diagonal potentially so knight a5 to c4 bishop e7 put you know rook c8 pressure on c3 pressure on c4 restraints on the a pawn still locking down the a file locking down c4 unless he wants to liberate my bishop So I think after this, it looks to me, I don't know about to you guys, it looks pretty comfortable here, this position at this stage. Um, <clears throat> very comfortable indeed. Uh, so bishop e7, if he did try and open the line c4, maybe I just take, he could try and use a pin, maybe just, I don't know, bishop d5 or rook c8. But if I get on with it with bishop e7, okay, so it introduces either g5, uh, which might be on sound here, because he could just take, he's got um, a reinforced uh, king position. Now I wonder knight c4 actually, pouncing, because queen c1 looks passive, but then his a pawn, why do I need to do that? Don't even need to do that, surely. But if f5 takes, takes, well, you could even take first. No, he would take here, take. Then there might be knight e4, but knight e5, knight e5, knight e4, rook c2, knight c4. don't know, this knight on e5 doesn't look that pleasant. So I wonder, what about just a6? Just asking this bishop, does it really want to take a6 and king a7? Just waiting a little bit more. So not committing with g5 yet. Because I think he might just be able to win that pawn. He's got a, a strong reinforced position over here. So I'm going to play like bishop c6 and rook b8 just in case. A bit more prophylaxis or is it overkill? That's a good question really. Um, now it seems g5 or f5 is less painful for the knight that's not pouncing in. So I wonder f5 and then g5 later. Because then it will be a lot more um, unattractive to take. Because then I'll be threatening f4. So I think I'm going to play f5. So if I can play g5 uh, with this f5 pawn. Okay, now knight c4 seems timely to gain the tempo on the knight takes takes opening up the bishop in ready for cooperation with g5 just got to be careful about a5 maybe uh, that could be a lockdown situation just playing a5 myself just to keep the files locked down mind you now also there's d5 as a threat on the cards so I've got to be careful about that so really I want to play two moves I want to play bishop d5 I don't want to play a5 potentially. Bishop d5 might be better because a5 might not be a threat here. b5. So bishop d5, let's lock that down. Then there's also queen c6 on g2 potentially. But I really want to get in g5. So if takes, takes, h file, f4. So knight a3 looks a bit slow, so I'm going to carry on here. This bishop now seems amazing on the diagonal. Dream Bishop on d5. Um, 
So knight a3, cheapo time, knight b5, takes, takes, mating, cheapo time. So what do I do about that? Not a5, knight b5 is, is not making uh, things uh, not very helpful. King b7 might not be that helpful because of a5. And if b5, knight b5, don't want to give too much counterplay here. Mind you, the bishop's like defensive here. Is this actually a convincing attack? I could just spare that possibility of knight b5. Bishop takes a3, giving up a nice bishop. But um, I wonder, without that, say bishop a3, g takes, rook g8, I can pile on the pressure on g2 uh, without too much concern about a5, because it could then be answered with b5 without a knight sack. So the question is, do I want to give up my dear bishop here? It's, I think, time to say, bishop, you've done a good job in this game. You've helped support g5, but I might have to let you go here with bishop takes a3. Um, I know Ralston talked about talking to pieces. Okay, first sign of insanity here. Um, but bishop a3, okay, queen c6, knight b5, takes takes is winning the queen. If I did just ignore the check, what about queen c6, knight b5, and I cheekily just in that position with pressure being increased on g2, I just play king b8. Is that such a big deal? I might actually be threatening a b. He could try and sack a pawn with bishop d6. It, the bishop doesn't seem as though it's that good after taking. Okay, he could win g5. So I think queen c6 might be playable in a nutshell here. a5, b5, the knight sack doesn't look convincing. Knight a, c2 to b4 is covered by the bishop. So there's either bishop a3 or queen c6 to consider. Queen c6 is also attacking uh, g2. So I think I'm, I'm tempted to give my vote actually to Queen C6 here. I'm going to play that. I'm going to risk that. Although Knight C4 and if Bishop C4 D5 is on B6, that's something to bear in mind potentially. So Knight B5 King B8. The Knight is getting in the way of the B file. A5 there. Queen takes B5. Or A takes B5. So. Okay, he's wasting a bit more time now. So I can take that knight when it goes to b4. So I can get a bit more time for my attack. I'm gonna I'm gonna get more time for my attack. Does it matter about h6? It shouldn't do. So if I play rook g8 for rook g4, so I'm gonna take that pesky knight. And I want to play rook g4 and, and rook g8 maybe h5. In fact, g3, h5. Is it worth here, though, considering a5? Now, he might just go back with the knight anyway, prompting um, bishop a3. So if I'm going to lose that anyway, then I'm going to lose that um, that bishop. Okay, so actually you can double and protect this at the same time. Now c4 is looking as though it's going to be weak as well, potentially. But once I double, surely there'll be some real pressure to deal with, I hope, on the king side. So doubling g3, h5. Can it be speeded up? Bishop h4's h4 later. If h4 from white, bishop h4, of course. If knight b4, then let's have a look at this. Bishop b4, and if takes rook g8, g3. Now, there's either bishop h4 or h5. h5 looks more logical to use the pawn as a battering ram. Bishop h4, I don't know if it does anything. Anyway, this bishop's going now. Uh, otherwise, I think I'm in big trouble if I don't take take that. Pardon me. I'm going to double here. There's Queen E7 as intruder. Oh dear, are things are things getting worse for me now. 
there could be trouble ahead. So for the moment, b6 is adequate. The knight looks okay compared to the bishop. I'm on g2. Surely he has to defend first now before going on to the attack. He can try and attack on b6 soon. Okay. So I wonder, a move like h5 or a knight retreat. If queen e7, queen d7. And going for that ending maybe might be a good bet to try and get a knight to d5 later. Not sure about a5, queen e7, rook g7. The queen's a pest here. Maybe I can keep the queen out with rook g7 and a5. That might be an idea actually. I think I'm going to try and evict that queen from b4. I don't like it poking into the position there. The knight's covering f8, so if I can evict it. If queen b5, fine. Maybe I can take and reroute the knight to d5 later. So a5 here. Mind you, now he's supporting it with the rook. Um, okay, the knight's kind of tied down to b6. Okay, maybe time for h5. I'm hoping this doesn't lose horribly. a5, b5. Things seem locked down. f8, e7 locked out of the queen. Can't get to c4 that easily. The bishop seems a bit bad at the moment. h4, h3, g3. Okay, now takes the knight f6 to d5. Looks promising. It protects b6. Um, he has got bishop e5. Maybe an exchange sack knight d5 takes, takes. Uh, d6 would be a bit loose. c3 would be a bit loose. Um, if I don't take the queen, queen c7 looks looks nasty. I could just I so this exchange sack. I'm not really sure. It's probably controversial now. Bishop e5, knight d5, but it does hold up b6. Lose the exchange, but potentially rounding up d6. So this is something to sort of consider here. Knight d5. Uh, how effective are the rooks? So say bishop g7, rook g7, rook f3, rook d7. Pick up one pawn for the exchange, c3 pressure. Hmm. It stops also rook b4. This is a monster knight on d5. If I don't do that, I could play just more simply rook d7. Um, that would also seem very simple. But then he could take, um, maybe try and double, maybe rook b4, rook b b2. So I'm going to play this. Daring exchange sack. Hopefully, um, if I can get my king to c6 and just pick up one pawn, I think that would be the start of the downward slide after the exchange sack uh, for the opponent. Because this knight would be a monster otherwise. Um, I just need to get some material for it for the exchange. Okay, maybe h4 locking out the rook for a moment. Mind you, there's rook h3. What about just f4 here? Uh, or just holding on, actually, with this move. Just to round up the pawn with king c6. So rook h3, or rook g3, rook h7. Oh dear. I'm under pressure. There's d7 coming up. Rook g3 looks as though that's potentially winning. That's a shame. <laughs> so, because e6 is under fire. Oh dear. So, rook h6, rook g7, king c6, d7, almost end the game. King c7. Holding on? Not sure. There isn't rook c7 mate, thankfully. Okay, he's giving me a little move maybe. If I can get to play king c6. That looks less scary than that position before. There's also knight f4 as a threat on the cards. 
Okay, if I can round up just one pawn, I think he'll be on a downward slide here, Petrosian style. Because otherwise this is a monster the knight, b5 would start to create a pass pawn on the queen side in the future. Uh, c3 is still vulnerable. Okay, I've got my pawn for the exchange. So will it be two? Will he sack this? Okay, there's b5, or there's h4, or there's f4, there's h4. I think I could go with b5 and try and get the rook like this over here. Uh, I could end up losing the b-pawn, takes, takes, rook g7, rook a8, rook b7, rook a8, takes, check, king f2 or rook f1. Uh, but the rook's active there, rook f2, I think h4 would have been useful that way, h4 in that position for rook a2, king moves back, f4 for knight e3 on g2. So let's go for that, yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, also, there might be the idea of just b4 and c3. So rook g7, rook h8, rook b7, rook a8. Okay, so let me come like this. I have to go like this rather. Now I could play b4 to create a pass pawn here with c3. Uh, so it's not just in vain. I think I'll do that. Hopefully there's no killer check here. So I've got a faster pass pawn as well than his B pawn, which I can get a rook behind anyway. So I just want to get this rook in via A7 into the game. In fact, C3 straight off the bat. Well, it's starting to look dangerous, C3, for C2. The knight still looks like a juicy knight. So rook a1, rook f1, rook a2. Let's say f4 and knight e3, or just c3 first. Check there. Takes c2 is almost winning. Um, king on f1 means knight e3 check. Can't get a blockade on, on the back with rook c8 to try and stop the rook attacking the pawn from behind. Hmm. I'll throw in the check here, or I'm going to lose that pawn, hold on a sec. I could force him to lose the exchange back with c3 if he's really panicky about that. Unfortunately, that, that doesn't seem to leave me with much. Um, but if rook a1, rook f1 is, is not a big deal anyway. Ah, uh, unfortunately, yes, I'm, I'm not, I'm making a meal out of this. Um, So is he going to sack back? I could throw in a check first. King f2, it's still, if I wanted to keep the knight, knight takes b4 after to keep some tension going to avoid uh, knight takes rook. Uh, so rook c3, this one, okay. Oh, he's got rook c1 now. I can play check and rook d1, rook c4, king d5. Was now threatening rook c6 mating, so I'm gonna have to go for this, I think, unfortunately. Let's get the king in. So maybe king e4 if. Uh... Okay, the center pawns I'm hoping are gonna be useful here. Get the rook behind this pawn over here. If king e3 will be threatening rook a1 mate. So I'm going to pawn down for not much. So threatening rook a1, mate. So g3, e5, tends to rook and pawn ending. Okay, rook f3, rook a1. In fact, g3, king f3, g4 takes. I seem to have equaled on pawns there. If g3, king f3, otherwise he's getting mated with rook a1. My king's visited his king here with three minutes to go. 
it does seem a lot more resistance on the 15 minute games even for someone under 2000 a lot higher quality games um, probably better preparation for FIDE time controls or even or for over the board games in the club games uh, if if this is the level of resistance so um F4, F3 looks looks crushing here. I'm not sure what he'd do about that. Um, actually, King G2. Okay, that's that's a good one then. King G2. But then E5, and then again E4 and F3 would seem really good. So I'm going to go for that. So King G2, E5. I want to play E3, E4, F3. King moves F2. So these pawns should be crashing through, even though he's a pawn up. The king's very, very aggressive here. Hopefully supporting these pawns. So he's down to two minutes. So hopefully there's enough pressure here on the board. Don't need to go for a time win at all. This looks just very convincing um, at the moment. <laughs> but after f3 unfortunately check is really annoying so what about king f3 then threatening again um, mate with rook a1 and also the pawn now if h3 king g3 uh, king f1 f3 and I think finally I'm, I'm making uh, a lot of progress there if rook h3 maybe I just take on g4 I think these pawns are going to crash through whatever happens. This F and E pawn. So rook h3, king g4. The rook's nicely placed on the seventh rank. Coming down to a minute as well. Okay, so this pawn is indicated he wants to queen it. And also there's h3, so let's see this, e5, b5, e4, b6, e3 threatens um, dire things like rook a1. So I'm wondering, my safety limit is b6 where I play rook a8 if I want to stop those pawns. Is there anything better? The checks, I'm not sure. I think the idea of getting the pawn to e3 is, is very attractive with the rook on the seventh. So e4, b6, e3 and he's he's faced with severe threats there. Or is he? Check king g2 f3 mating. I think so. So it's my last chance for rook a8. So do I play e3 or rook a8? e3 if h3 king g3. So b7 check King g2 f3 is is doing it. Okay. So f3 here. There's b7. Okay. I can play. Uh, nope. This pawn is really dangerous. Or is it f3? Or e2 and rook b7. Decoy e2. There's f king f2. So king f3. Oh dear, this is, could be annoying again. <laughs> so b7 check <laughs> and rook b8. So trying to set the rook. Oh dear. Uh, have I fluffed this one up? f3 b7. Or rook a8. There's king g2. Okay, let's let's go with. I, I hate to do a passive move here. From this position, I'm coming down to a minute. Um, but I can't stop that pawn otherwise. So I think this is the last chance. I've got rook g8 anyway, potentially. So he's going to play king g3 and he's going to block the pawns. Or is it? Have I got f3? So rook b8 and king f3. Okay. If I can get in f3. So king g2 f3 check. I might actually be able to sneak in a check, a useful check here. So down to a minute each. 
So this is getting to be a bit of a cliffhanger 15 minute game. If I play this, so I'm threatening maybe e2. Or king e2, rook f4, rook b7. Would that be enough with the e pawn? Um, okay, he's winning one of these pawns by force. I can't see if I don't. I don't want him to blockade. Uh, there's rook d d8 here. There's check. Nope. I think I've mucked this up. Okay, he's got 20 seconds. I've mucked it up. He's going to win that pawn free of charge. I think it's going to have to be a time win. I'm sorry. I've completely mucked up the rook and pawn ending. <laughs> I'm just losing all the pawns, aren't I? Might be worth a post mortem to see what happened after. I apologise for that, uh, but it would seem so promising. I don't know <laughs> if these guys are really strong on fifteen minute, or I'm just really weak. Probably a mixture of both. Um, let's have a quick overview and summary of the game. Um, he just seems to play quite solidly, and. I thought I was just just having a great position here, just seemed really great, without too many issues. But then these little knight manoeuvres are causing issues. It's queen coming to b4, bit of a pain. Queen d6, the idea of bishop e5. Now possibly this this maybe this, the simpler approach could have been justified unless you know rook b4 is strong. So if rook d7, rook b4, what do I do about c4 here? So although knight d5, some of you are going to say risky move, it did cut out rook b4s. It might actually be the least risky option, knight d5. Rook d7, rook b4, I can't really see that as that pleasant. Bishop's quite potentially useful if he picks up c4. So it's a bit of a struggle, yeah. Probably some inaccuracies um, gave back the exchange. Quite willing to do that. This ending again seemed really, really promising, and he was just finding moves all the time to put. Well, his, you know, to, to counter. Oh well. So uh, yeah, comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.